shine it down on the belly. Hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. Spring has thawed out the long bitter winter. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Beaver Kill River. I might even catch and release one or two. Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine. If I couldn't do it, I think I would cry. Well, life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Trout is rising. Make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I feel so much better. And if he doesn't, I'll feel no shame. Stone flies and tennis, and the ripples are plenty. Mayflies courting on fragrant breeze. And cedar wax wings come down from the heaven. Wait for their dinner up in my dream. And my waders leak, and it's raining now on my favorite stream. I'll bear it all, just fish with a feather. So when I sleep, I will have a sweet dream. And life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, don't really matter. It's fun just to. Hey folks, how you doing? Uh, welcome to today's show. And if you were here last week, you would you saw that we tied a hare's ear nymph. And I was just um, all the skills that I, I'm going to be covering over the next few weeks in fly tying will help you uh, be able to uh, tie any fly in any catalog. This is the Cabela's catalog. I just got it yesterday uh, in the mail. Um, all these flies here. You will be able to tie any one of these after after today's show and, and the next couple of shows. Why? Because we're, I'm going to show you how to do all the techniques used to tie any of these. And then you can pick up a catalog like this and say, gee, instead of paying $2, I can tie up a dozen of these for, for about 2 bucks. So, myself. So, uh, get a catalog or, or Cabela's or Gander Mountain, go down and look at the flies or whatever. Uh, Orvis catalogs has pictures of flies, and what it does is it gives you give the books give you an idea what the fly looks like. Then you sit down at your bench and you copy it, and even if it's not exact, it may be a better fly in the first place. So feel free to experiment with these with these techniques and materials and everything else. And there's a lot of new materials out, um, like silly skin. I may buy some of that and try to t show you how to tie some streamers uh, using that stuff. But anyway. Welcome to today's show. And last week we tied the hare's ear nymph. Okay, great all-around nymph. The skills we we learned was to tying our thread on the hook. We put a tail on it. Uh, we dubbed, put dubbing on the body. Uh, we created a wing case and the thorax, which is the upper portion of the the insect's uh, nymph. Um, and uh, it's a very good fly. In this in this catalog here that I just showed you, it had six different variations of the hare's ear nymph, with bead heads and tungstens and blah 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 and so on. So it's a great fly to to learn to tie and and get started with. 
and it's a fly, fly that you'll always tie. Uh, all, throughout your lifetime, you will be tying the hairs of your nip. Now, uh, again, on today's show, we're going to take a, a little step forward here, and we're going to tie a dry fly. A dry fly is uh, the, uh, a, a, actually, I'll back up again, because there's dry flies in all different variations, okay, all different insects. But the fly we're going to tie today is a mayfly invita imitation that is in the stage where after it uh, is a nymph for a couple of years, it comes to the surface, breaks through the surface film, and then floats on the water like a little sailboat where they are vulnerable to trout, bass, and, and fall fish and other other fi uh, fish species that feed on insects. So uh, it's uh, it's a good fly to use here on the Shenango and Susquehanna River for bass and fall fish. And you can also take it down to the Beaverkill or Willowemock or the Delaware and catch tr large trout on very small flies, size 18 and 20 you can tie. Today I'm going to use a size 10 hook just so it's more visible to uh, my viewers out there because I zoom in and uh, I want to make sure you can see it. And anytime uh, you want, you can email me a question after a show about something I said or talked about or did or, or uh, whatever and I will uh, try to answer, you can ask questions or, or whatever and I will uh, come back on the air with your uh, responses as soon as I can, okay? I take the shows a little bit ahead of time uh, in uh, production wise, but that's not your problem. Uh, so feel free to answer, ask me questions and I will, I will try to answer uh, anything I can and anything I get either via email or on the air, you know. So this isn't my show. This is your show. And this is uh, a resource I'm giving to you because I fly fished since I was 15 and uh, uh, I, I found it to be uh, one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And uh, I've lost a lot of friends along the way uh, uh, who have passed away. And I, I try to fish for them. So I have a lot of friends that uh, are no longer with us. And I continue to fish on their behalf. So a lot of times I'll say, hey, Mike, this, this fish is for you. Say, hey, Morgan. The next trout is yours, buddy, and uh, so uh, I, I hope uh, I hope you get into fly fishing and, and and realize that the reason I teach this show is to share um, everything that the friends that I fished with in the in the past have taught me. I don't want want anything to go on, left unsaid um, that will help you. Okay, I'm not here to hold anything back. I'm here to share. Uh, my experiences with you freely and I hope you you share them too in fact if you have a picture of a your first trout on a fly or your first fish on a fly um, or if you uh, fishing I would love to have photos uh, you know at the end of the show uh, I, I'd love to have photos of my uh, viewers out there fly fishing or fishing in general uh, again it, it's called the fly fishing show for kids of all ages but you don't have to fly fish you can, uh, if you're spinning, I got a spinning rod right there, you know. Um, I got spinning lures hanging on my shelf here. Um, that's, it's not a contest. It's not that someone's better than others. Uh, fly fishing is just another form of fishing, and it's, I, I find it to be much more interesting than just uh, spin fishing. But that's my perception. Uh, there's a lot of other people out there. Well, let's get into... Our, uh, we're going to tie like a, a light Cahill mayfly imitation, and uh, we may do a, par a parachute too. Um, what I'm going to be using is some uh, light colored, uh, cream colored hackle for my hackle, and I may uh, even make a body using a quill from this. But typically, for a classic dry fly, uh, Catskill dry fly, you will use. Um, the feathers, you will pull some feathers out of here, or fibers off the hackle here. Now it's called uh, microfibers or whatever, uh, um, put my glasses on. This is watershed uh, mayfly tails. Um, I find these to be very good 
because they hold up. They make a very durable uh, tail and they stand up well on the water. And the purpose of a tail is to imitate a tail, but it also helps hold the fly on the water because uh, the shape of the hook, there's more weight near the bend and that's going to sink. So the tail actually comes out and helps hold the fly up on the water. So uh, we have these right here and I may use those today. So um, I'm also using a size 10 hook and I may use some dubbing, some light, light colored dubbing for the body and uh, I may do a couple of flies because there's a lot of variations here that you can do. So uh, this is a very simple fly to dye. Oh, one thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to use some lemon wood duck here and uh, uh, wood deck feathers here and I'm going to create a uh, wings using uh, a split V configuration using some of this material. So put some of that right there and let's get started. We're going to learn some stuff here today. Let's get this back here a little ways where it can work. Now, uh, the thread I'm using today is a light colored thread. Uh, nothing fancy. Just I try to match the thread to the hackle match the thread to the hackle the best you can and uh, uh, it should look just fine. Uh, my hook isn't in here straight so I'm going to straighten that. The hook should be horizontal nice and straight and that way your thread doesn't come off while you're tying. And again we're going to tie on our thread by pulling it towards us and then start wrapping. And as you wrap, you wrap over the thread itself and it holds it down. And if you keep this other strain, this other tail end, at a 45 degree angle, you can wrap really fast and it gives you a nice tight under wrapping for the body of the fly. So there we go. Now, back here at the end, I want to make a ball of thread here. Okay, so I'm just going to keep wrapping and make a ball of thread because what's what we're going to do is when we put our uh, micro fibers on there, um, that little ball will help split them. Okay, so I'm going to just take some of my micro fibers and you can get these at Gander Mountain or Orvis Shop, wherever you want to buy them. We're going to take a little clump because this is a pretty big fly. I'm going to take a good sized chunk out of there and nip that right off. And to measure the tail, the tail should be about the length of the shank of the hook. So I'm gonna hold my fiber right there and measure it. Okay? And then I'm gonna pinch it with my other hand. And then I can trim some of this off right there. But uh, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna hold that on the hook and do the pinch method. So I'm gonna bring the thread up through my fingers back down and then pull up and back down and then pull up if you pull down your fibers will wrap around and start spinning on you so there we got a nice tail we're gonna put a nice body under body there and it when you wrap up to that ball that you made there it'll split the tails okay so it's good to wrap all the way back and pull tight because that will open up your tails right there. Now for this fly um, there's really no rib and uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use some dubbing and uh, so I'm going to pull out a little bit of dubbing with my wax bow. I'm going to use some wax here, just put some on the thread, helps make it a little sticky, and then we're just going to use small amounts, not a lot, just very tiny amounts, and spin it, and just take very small amounts, because we want to make a nice tapered body here, and you can actually taper the dubbing on the thread. But because we matched our thread, 
I'm going to show you another trick and that's after you dub your body we're going to loosely wrap the thread around so we're going to come around here start way in the back and we're going to wrap our body forward and come right up to about the shoulder here make a nice tapered body but we're going to clover leaf some of the thread or figure eight the thread over that body and make a nice tight body see isn't that beautiful very easily done and uh, I'm going to put my uh, I'm done with the dubbing okay now uh, there's a lot of different ways to do the wings and some folks like to uh, you know take their their feather here and tie it back and then pull the wings forward um, other people uh, do different techniques uh, I found my technique here that I'm going to show you today to be about the best and uh, before I do that I want to put some hackle on the hook and I'm going to use some large hackle just so you can see it pretty well and you want to trim this along the stem okay so you're going to pull it out and then trim it we're going to cut this off here and that gives you some little fibers to help hold the hackle on okay and again this is pretty big hackle uh, this is a little bit oversized from what you want I put the hackle on first just because I, I find it to be easier okay so now my thread is in position to tie my wing in so now for your wings what I like to do is there's a center quill in there I like to go right in there and cut it right out So I'm gonna go in there and knit okay and then I'm gonna grab these tips so they're lined up together and then I'm gonna cut this right out of there like that okay and then I'm gonna keep pinching it and I have a little clump of feathers now it doesn't look like a whole lot there but that's plenty for the wing okay and what this does the wing does is it helps the fly to land land upright and it also imitates the wings so I'm gonna measure this about the length of the shank okay and I'm gonna do my pinch method again now I'm gonna cut off the bottom portion so it's even now I'm gonna pinch that right there on top of the hook and now I'm gonna do the pinch method and wrap right up through there and get it on there nice and tight okay so now that it's facing back that's not the way we want it uh, some folks tie it so the wings are facing forward and then bring them back I like to tie them facing back it's just faster if I wasn't talking to you I'd, I'd have five of these flies by now tied okay so now we got our wing nice and upright okay now we need to split it and a good way to split it I found is you just put your finger on there and then you poke at it with your uh, dubbing needle and get two evenly uh, two even sized patches of uh, wood duck and then you push forward while you're pushing forward and keeping them to uh, the two portions separate I just do a couple wraps around one one side okay now I'm gonna grab the other side and then come over around that okay and then I'm gonna do oh, I'm gonna do a couple figure eights here where I go in between each one and come back around and tie up to the eye there we have a nice nice split V wing I'll turn this around for you see the nice nice V yeah okay 
Now it's just a simple matter of finding some hackle pliers and wrapping our hackle. And we're going to do several wraps behind the wings and we actually want to 